Good morning. Today is Purple Day. Because there's no such thing as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday anymore. You just have different days of the week. You've got Green Day, Purple Day, even got Gray Day. But you know what? Best day of the week. You know what the best day of the week is? Payday. And uh, a lot of the case and our clients have been celebrating the best day of the week. They, we just wired out uh, probably, Conrad, you could you verify this. We just wired out over a million dollars uh, to personal injury clients over the past couple of days. I can and verify that. that. It is true. Yep. Normally, we have the clients come in. You know, we give them their check. They take a picture with that big check with smiles and we hug it out and shake hands and sometimes even shed a few tears after a big personal injury case is settled. Um, not the case anymore and probably won't be the case for some time to come. So now we're uh, wiring the money directly uh, to the bank account of the client. Uh, and then they call us, of course, and, you know, thank us. But uh, some big, big things have been happening um, these past few months for personal injury clients at PPID and some big things happening for immigration clients as well. Uh, this show has been uh, a, a huge success to say the least. People have been calling in, getting their immigration questions answered for absolutely free. Uh, some silly questions, some not so silly questions, but questions nonetheless that are being answered by real attorneys looking to give real solutions um, and trying to do their best to make sure you feel like family um, if you do have a case and need our services. My name is Adam Handler. I am the case handler. I'm with uh, my partners here at Pollock Pollock, Isaac DeSico, uh, talking about uh, immigration, talking about personal injury, and you are officially now cruising with the case handler. Before we get started, if everybody would do me the favor and take our number down, dial it. Let it ring, save it, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. The phone number for excellent attorneys that are here to help you and treat your case like it's their most important case. Whether it's a personal injury case or an immigration case, we're here to help. We're here to spread the love, spread the knowledge. And of course, the information is 100%, no strings attached, free. Good morning, everybody. Let's see who we got on the panel today. We got David Squeezanicki, who's firing up the controls. We have Maestro, the Con Conrad, the Maestro Pollock, the managing partner, tickling the ivories right now. Uh, Nelson, the Maverick Madrid. Nelson, can we get a, a, a high five, a, a, a flyby salute? There we go. Raising the coffee is enough. And of course, uh, you may remember him from last Thursday's show. Uh, we call him the general because really <laughs> nobody gets more done than this man and nobody's been doing it longer than this man. Uh, Alan Kay. Good morning, Alan, to you. Good morning. How are you? We're excellent. We can't wait to hear... Uh, about some amazing experiences that you'll be able to share uh, with the community, with the listeners, about some really tough cases that you were able to see through and, and, and bring to a successful result. So I think maybe we'll start off a little bit with immigration and then we'll bounce back to personal injury. I'll fire up a true life success story for a wonderful, wonderful day. The sun is shining, the weather is sweet, and to the rescue, here I am. Uh, squeeze, wagwan, man. Everything I want. Want to say welcome to Cruising with the Case Handler. Adam Handler, thanks for the wonderful introduction of Cruising with the Case Handler. Each and every single weekday at 8.30 a.m. right here on 93.5 WVIP FM, covering the tri-state area, northern New Jersey, southern Connecticut, and obviously all five boroughs. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, and yes, now San Suffolk County. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's a panel of attorneys. And when I say a panel of attorneys, not just generic attorneys, I'm talking about not just real life attorneys. I'm talking about attorneys with experience and depth in the capacity of personal injury, 
Of course, you heard the top man himself, Adam Handler, when it comes to personal injury, and obviously immigration. We've got managing partner, Conrad Pollock. The maestro is coming up shortly. Adam introduced him. Also, we've got the maverick, Nelson Madrid, top gunner. That's what I call him. You ever have any issues when it comes to being arrested and now you're seeking immigration benefits? It's very important you speak with that man, that attorney, Nelson Madrid, a.k.a. the Maverick. And obviously, we've got the general. He is back, okay? Last week, we got schooled in immigration with a lot of knowledge. The general, okay? The man who has been, it for, been in it for a while, the man who is respected at the Department of Homeland Security and throughout the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, that happens to be the attorney, of course, Alan K. Alan E. K., got to give him the respect, the general. And we're going to be talking a little bit about immigration, and then we're going to switch it to personal injury, and we'll go back and forth. But as usual, I'll hand the reins over to the managing partner, Conrad Pollock. I always like for him to reiterate what's in immigration news, what's happening, because each and every single day, this is a fresh show. It's a new show. There are things that are already in place, and we have new listeners every time. Before I hand it over to him in 10 seconds, I would like to remind everyone that is watching us on Facebook, my page, David Squeeze Anarchy, Adam's page, The Case Handler, PPID's page, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico, share the page in groups, on pages you manage, and on your timeline, and on your friend's timeline. Anyone who need information in the capacity of personal injury and immigration should definitely, absolutely tune into us and of course yeah adam i had you pinned up there sorry about that okay okay i know i'm not a white guy so uh, let me unpin <laughs> okay i was watching myself uh <laughs> i don't listen i don't love anybody more than myself well that's not true my wife and my kids but second to them i love myself but i don't need to watch myself uh, guys, uh, good looking uh, guys on this panel look at alan k the man uh, I mean, always looks so put together uh, always all right he's got that attorney shirt on you know you see that shirt you know he's an attorney but let me hand it over to the maestro who jumped this all off with of course the keyboards but he is a truly an attorney with years of experience 35 years to be exact conrad welcome to the show man bring us uh, up to speed up to welcome, date. welcome yes thanks everybody good morning everyone um Actually, you know, I was thinking about my years of experience. I actually have 36 years of experience. I started, I was admitted to the bar in 1984, and I was working with my dad for a couple of years before that. So officially, I have 36 years of experience. So I just want to state that for the record here. All right. Of course, that pales in comparison to the general's level of experience, which I don't know. Alan, what is it, 50, 60 years? I forget. I stopped counting at 40. <laughs> a true lady never tells her age. <laughs> Well, all right, but Alan's 40, my 36, and Nelson's 13. Excuse me, I don't have a calculator, but I think that's close to 90 years of experience between the three of us. That's pretty uh, it's pretty impressive, I would say, you know? But anyway, um, in fact, you know, it ju just comes to mind, um, talking about Alan's experience. And, you know, the, the, the thing that we always try to um, brag about in terms of in terms of the general and what Alan brings to the table at the firm. Um, you know, perfect example. We just signed up a case a few days ago and, per, and right up, right up Alan's alley. He immediately, this is a case involving somebody who did a case on their own and the case has been languishing in immigration somewhere for the last couple of years. It's an adjustment of status based. Alan, you didn't nod your head. You know, you know where I'm going. Yeah. And um, the case has just been, who knows, no, knows where it's been. Alan, what does he do? He goes into his little directory and he says, ah, here is the director of the section in which that case should be. Sends a letter, sends an email, all right, yesterday. Before the end of the day, he had a response from that person, from the supervisor of the section saying, we're closed, but I got it. The minute we reopen, I'm on it, all right? And that's unique, all right? And I will say that again, I'm doing this for a long time myself. Nelson's doing it for a long time as well. Alan's doing it for longer. Few people out, out there in the immigration in, in the immigration field have the level of expertise and have the 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 uh, the contacts and who to go to, where to go with a particular problem. Few people have that ability to just go right to the source and get a response. And I, I am not making this up. This happened yesterday. Right? Few people out there have that ability, and that's what Alan brings to the table. And Alan. 
and Alan is a pra- Alan is a practicing attorney. Again, he's not just sitting behind his desk making phone right. calls. He, this man, carries his own bag. There's been times where it's been the dead of winter, pitch black at 4:45 in the afternoon. He's coming back to the office, and I feel like almost like I need to be carrying his stuff for him, and he does it. He chugs chugs away, plugs away, practicing attorneys at our firm. Well, well, I I bring that, Adam, excuse me, I bring this up because, you know, again, we're getting a million calls. I mean, every day, in fact, the phone's ringing right now. You know, we're getting so many calls and a a, a lot of them, I I don't know about a majority, but I'd say half, Nelson, back me up here. I'd say half of the calls we get are from people that have done their cases themselves, all right? So here is a perfect example of how we can help people like that. They call us. We, and they, again, so, so frequently we have a situation where the person has done the case themselves and the case is languishing for months, for years. What can you do to help me? How can I get my case approved? How can I get my interview? Okay, we got the guy who can help you, right? That's among, obviously among various other aspects and what we bring to the table, there the various attributes we have at the firm, but we can help in those situations. Not a lot of people can, you know, we have that ability. So I, I, again, I just want to throw that out there. Maybe I'm belaboring the point, but you know, it's a, that is a seriously major advantage to have at our firm that we have. And that's why Alan's been with us for the past six years. Absolutely. Once again, folks, Alan, okay, EK, the general, the man who has the links, the connection with the respective departments when it comes to immigration. And we do appreciate that. So ladies and gentlemen, we want to remind you, with uh, three attorneys on board here today. It is now time for you to start placing your immigration questions on Facebook, okay, in the comment section. Once again, join us on Facebook, the Case Handler page, PPID's page, David Squeeze Anakin's page. Place your questions there. Um, ladies and gentlemen, also remember on 93.5 FM, if, if you're tuning in and you want to ask a question, yes, you can call 844 774 3529. That's 844 774 Three five two nine. Now, um, Nelson, I don't know if you want to say anything before I have Adam give us a true success story on the personal injury side, and then of course after that we'll bring on the general, Alan E. K. All right. You know, you know just for uh, a minute or two, um, as Conrad pointed out, you could have someone's email address, um, and it's it's funny Conrad said that because many times I go to Alan and I say, Alan. You know, there's a difference between Alan E.K. and Nelson Madrid. Can you please reach out to this person because they're not getting back to me? And Alan will reach out to them. And more often than not, he will get a response. So, I mean, again, we're a team. We all work together um, and we feed off of each other. You know, if there's uh, one thing one person can do or, you know, one person has it in, obviously we know who that person is. And again, we all work together. So, you know, that's that's pretty much what you get when you come to PPID. Absolutely. And once again, folks, the number for Pollock, Pollock, Isaac and the Seco, PPID, the law firm that is at 225 Broadway in New York City. And yes, personal injury, over 110 million U.S. dollars settled by the case handler himself, Adam Handler. I'm quite sure you've been hearing the ads all over the station, even in the wee hours of the morning, throughout the day. Okay. You can hear Adam's voice on the station. You hear him letting people know what it is that he's capable of, what he has done in the past 15 years in settling cases for his clients. He's truly the top man when it comes to you getting hurt in an accident. You need that personal injury attorney, and that's Adam Handler. And ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to immigration, hands down, I've got the most professional team here, the most experienced team to handle your immigration case. But what's important is not just getting the free consultation by calling 844-PPID-LAW. What's important is not just getting that free consultation by calling 844-774-3529. What's important is that you say to Nelson, you say to, of course, the general, Alan E.K., you say to Conrad, I want to retain you. I heard Squeeze and Adam speaking about you on the radio consistently. I need to ensure that you are handling my case. Hire them, retain them, work something out with them, but make sure that one firm and one firm only is handling your case. And that's PPID. Remember that name, PPID, PPID. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, we'll come back later on. We'll answer some immigration questions by you placing them on Facebook at David Squeezanic or the case handler or PPID's page, or by you calling 844-774-3529. 
But for now, we're going to flip it over to personal injury, get a true success story from the shark, a.k.a. the case handler, the man who goes for the juggler when it comes to, of course, getting the maximum compensation, the money. Okay, people say, Squeeze, why do you get so excited about money? Do you know what it's like to get hurt and then going through that hurt with no money? You don't want that. Okay, we can't fix the hurt necessarily, but we can actually appease you with a higher settlement than most, if not all attorneys out there. Make it the case handler to handle your personal injury case. And with that said, without further ado, it's time for the shark, AKA the case handler. Adam hey. Adler, it's all Please. yours. Listen, you know, you gave me you gave me that nickname, the shark. I was thinking about it uh, the other day. I, I think I was like 27 years old <clears throat> when you gave me that nickname. That's how long we've been doing this together. Yep. I didn't I don't even think I was a father yet. I didn't know. Like, Damn, this kid, you know, because we were working together and and you were listening. Uh, we were promoting the other firm that I was with at the time. And you were hearing about these settlements. You're like. Who is this guy? You know, this this little kid walking in with multi-million dollar checks on a weekly basis. And uh, I'd like to think that even since then, I've become uh, even uh, more honed in on my craft. So thank you for that introduction. Uh, very, very quickly. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. back there. So... Uh, you know, civil system in, in, in the United States provides for, for one one remedy only, and that's monetary compensation. Like you said, Squeeze, we, we can't take the pain away. Uh, we can't unbreak your arm. We can't, uh, you know, we can't unherniate a disc in your back, but we can provide you monetary compensation for your injuries, medical bills, time out of work. And that's, of course, what we do. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're on, a, on a great pace this year, even though we've been kind of sidetracked by not being able to work in the office, but you know we're out over twelve million dollars so far uh, for personal injury cases. In fact, yesterday, this is news to report real quick. Um, we settled a case for one point eight million dollars. Now that was a case that was referred to us by another law firm that we work closely with. I do their trial work, um, and we brought that case in for a one point eight million dollar settlement. Now, why is that significant? First of all, that's one point eight million dollars tax free. Um, to that client, uh, a client of that firm that said, hey, listen, I think you can you can seal the deal on this. You can get more money on this case that, than we can. Um, and, and that's exactly what I did for them. But that was the biggest, and I'm so excited for them, that was the biggest settlement in that firm's history. I found out yesterday that the $1.8 million was the biggest settlement in that firm's history. And that firm's been around for a while and they are excellent attorneys. Excellent attorneys, even nicer guys. So congratulations to them. I know they're listening. Uh, job well done. And thank you for the courtesy of a referral. And, and I'm sure everybody out there can appreciate when another attorney refers you a case, that's pretty much the highest compliment you can be paid, right? When a doctor makes a referral to another doctor or a lawyer makes another referral to a lawyer, <clears throat> you're basically saying, maybe you can do a better job than I can on this. Uh, not necessarily always true. I think there's a lot of great lawyers out there, but we certainly stand by our results and uh, we're very appreciative for the confidence that they have in our firm. Um, real quick, I just wanted to share one, one story with everybody out there and then I wanna flip over to Alan because I know he's got a lot of interesting things to say. Um, and here we are right here. Uh, this is a case in which we helped somebody recently, uh, Veronica from the Bronx, um, not her real name, uh, whenever we get, you know, the big, big money, they, they generally don't like their real name being used and sometimes don't like it taking a picture with us. Which... Veronica is a good name. Uh, you know, yeah, here's the case. Yeah. That's a good name. And that, that's where I grew up, the Bronx. It says here, the Case Handler team did a great job. Adam Handler is the best, in my opinion. He takes a real interest in you and he's very caring. That's why I'm attached to him and his team for life. Wow. Hopefully your wife's not reading this. Uh, listen, she, she, got, she probably got a new bag out of this settlement. Well, she's like, you know. No, but I understand where Veronica is coming from. So yeah. this is great. And, and she got a settlement of $96,680. Dollars. $96, Let's and, not forget the 680. And, and don't, and, and I'll tell you why that's important <clears throat> not to leave off that $680 because it shows you that we got every dollar we could out of this case. You know, we didn't accept 
95,000, 96,000. The maximum insurance was $100,000, right? Uh, she has a choice. She can, you know, settle for, uh, you know, 96,680, which is the best number I was able to get. Or she can wait two years and go to trial for 100 grand. She didn't want to wait. I certainly don't blame her uh, for not wanting to hold out two years for the full 100. But I remember the insurance company said, oh, we'll pay you 90. I said, no, 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 we, you know, I'll go down to 99,500. And she's like, oh, we'll go up to 93,000. I said, I'll go down to 99,000. Finally, we, 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 broke, we whittled it down to 96,680. But literally, I remember at one point, <clears throat> I was fighting over $30, $30. But I knew that Veronica from the Bronx had one chance to get it right one chance at financial justice, one chance to make sure that everything was taken care of, that she needed to be taken care of in her one and only shot. We always say one chance, one choice of attorney, and it should be Adam Handler, the case handler. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share just a nice story on a sunny day. And like I said, I, I got to hear what Alan's got to say before we go to the top of the hour in a few minutes. Absolutely. Once again, um, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard from the top personal injury attorney in the tri-state area, in my opinion, as to how he works. And he works like a family member of yours. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, remember to call this number 844-774-3529. If you ever get hurt in an accident, you need one man, okay? Because you've got one chance, ladies and gentlemen, and one choice truly to make it the best when it comes to selecting a personal injury attorney. Make it the case handler, Adam Handler. He will be a shark on your case to ensure that you get the maximum compensation. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, remember the number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Prior results do not guarantee similar outcome. However, it is in your interest to go with the attorney, the case handler, to get the maximum compensation if and when you get hurt in an accident there's that number that you call, well, 911, and then his number, 844-774-3529. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to talk immigration. We'll come back to personal injury later. And of course, this show is about personal injury and immigration each and every single weekday here at 8.30 a.m. Saturday, 7 p.m. Sundays, 12 noon. Let's jump right over to it. Mr. Alan Kay, Mr. General, the General, how are you doing again today? And what are we talking about today before we jump to immigration questions? We're going to talk about the case that Conrad talked about, which is kind of interesting. One of my, I have a past president of the American Immigration Lawyers Association, which now has 15,000 members. I have over 40 years experience doing immigration. I stopped counting at 40. Um, the case that we talked, that Conrad talked about is very interesting. <clears throat> and it relates to communication, which is one of my interests, communicating with immigration and other government agencies. In this particular case, the client retained us. He had filed his own case. He hadn't heard for years and years and years what was going on with this case. So I sent an email to the field office director handling his area where he lives out in Long Island. And I got an, an answer back immediately, which is really interesting. And the field officer director said this, currently the office is tempor temporarily closed to the public. The staff is working from home, which is kind of interesting what, what they're doing now and when they're going to open. She says, I will have the case looked at when the officer is back in the office to pick up work, which is usually bi-winkly. So it was interesting. I got an answer right away, and she tells me that she's going to have somebody look at the case. And uh, we sent a copy of this to the client. I'm sure he's happy about that. And I will follow up on this. But we were all very surprised that I got an answer really fast. I mean, I know that. I know this person because I go to meetings at immigration with all the uh, field office directors and all the staff. But it was like really nice that I sent her an email. She sent me an email right away. And this case had been languishing for years. And so I'm sure the client is happy and we will follow up on this. So it just gives you an idea about what's going on with immigration here that this, this particular office, they were all working from home. Uh, they're closed to the public. They'll be opening in the beginning of June, hopefully. And she says that I will have the case looked at when the officer is back in the office to pick up work. So we'll, we'll report to you again what happens on this case. But here I got an answer on a case that's been languishing because the client did it himself. It's a naturalization case. And 
we really want to find out what's holding it up and when he can get naturalized. So, Alan, I'm sorry, just to interject, it's not just an officer, it's the field office director, okay? Yes. Yes. <laughs> David, the field office director is the person in charge of that office that he happened to contact, okay? The big shot, the, the, you can't go higher than the field the head office guy. director. The head guy. The head guy. Yeah. Unbelievable. And, and, and I, want, I want everyone that's listening to 93.5 FM and watching us on Facebook, and please on Facebook, share us. I want for you to understand that what we're trying to say here is that we have an attorney that's on board at PPID, okay, that can pick up a phone or send an email and get a response expeditiously. That is extremely important, ladies and gentlemen, if you have an immigration case that is pending, it fell off the tracks, fell off the line. We don't know what's going on. We need answers. It is extremely important that you're working with a firm that has that link. And that's one of the things that we pride ourselves in here on this show, Cruising with the Case Handler, as we talk about personal injury and immigration. Squeeze, squeeze, yes. squeeze. The word is gravitas. Gravitas. Gravitas, that is the word. Google it, right? You'll see Alan's picture there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, actually, I very quickly, uh, Conrad, and I never and told you. Give for me, Nelson, before we get to the top of the hour. We got three minutes. Okay, it's 844 774 3529. That's 844 774 3529. And just very quickly, you know, when I had first started practicing, Conrad, I never told you this, but I actually contacted, um, I think, an assistant field office director, and they responded. And their response was, who are you and how did you get my email address? Don't ever email me again. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so that, that does not happen to the general. <laughs> Alan no. Jay. Does not happen. No. They, they, there's utmost respect for this attorney, ladies and gentlemen. And I want everyone out there right now, before we get to the top of the hour on 93.5 FM. Okay. Everyone. Stop what you're doing. I don't care if you log off Facebook to dial this number. Everyone right now who is in need of immigration help, call this number. You are guaranteed a free consultation, something that I'm still in awe that Conrad and his um, partners decided to do. A 100% free phone consultation. Dial this number now. The number is 844-774-3529. As you switch to Facebook, dial the number 844 844- 774-3529, get a free consultation. If you get hurt in an accident, same number, same law firm, you get the case handler, 844-774-3529. We want for you to do something else for us. Everyone who believes in this show, everyone who believes in Squeeze for the past eon, since 1996, and the attorneys here, and Adam Handler, this number, 844-774-3529, Text it to one person. I'm not even asking you to text it to two. Text it to one person and say, store this number for a serious, serious law firm, PPID. All right? When it comes to personal injury and immigration, you need that one number. Text it to someone. 844-774-3529. Or email it to someone. 844-774-3529. You will need that number sometime in the future, ladies and gentlemen, because it's not just personal injury or immigration. They are truly a full service law firm in New York City, serving New York City and obviously serving New York and New Jersey. And obviously on a federal level, the entire United States when it comes to immigration. Once again, the number 844-774-3529. Proven track record they have, speaking like Yoda in Star Wars. 844-774-3529. That's 844- 774-3529. Get that number stored in your phone. Adam, we love this, man. We love it when the general is on, man. Love it. Love it. Love it. We have to salute the general. We're going to the top of the hour. Switch to Facebook, ladies and gentlemen. David Squeezadiki, the case handler, our PPID, Pollock Pollock, Isaac, o'clock. and Desico. Here you go. We are on. You were this close, this close to getting it in. This close, this close. I want to hear more from Alan. I really, truly want to hear more from Alan. I want to hear about the, the, the cases he has done, you know, 
And, you know, there's, there's one individual on this team that gets more excited than anyone else when it comes to Allen, and that's Nelson. You can hear the passion in his voice, man. You know, you know, you know what it is, uh, David? I've been doing this for a while. Uh-huh. And when Allen joined the firm, the, the, the cases we began to get um, were fact patterns okay. I had never seen before. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to me, obviously, I welcome a challenge. And I think that makes you a better attorney when you start doing different cases, cases you hadn't, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, somebody, you know, you've heard of a DWI. How's about a DWI while driving a boat? You know, what are the immigration <laughs> consequences of that? I, I've never had someone with a DWI driving a boat. Um, and many, many other cases. And I think one of the reasons a lot of these people go to Allen is obviously because of his experience. Um, but again, I, I think it makes everyone a better attorney. Um, I think the cases are challenging. And, you know, we, we are successful at what we do. Um, again, it, it's, we don't generally take cases um, that we believe we cannot actually help someone. So, you know, I think Alan working with Alan has made me a better attorney. You know, and, and, and you know, it, it's always, I'm a firm believer that we should always have a mentor. And that's what I see Alan has. Okay. And, and yeah, we may be showing his age, but you know, it's always great to have a mentor and the guy, always, is, oh, the guy is Obi-Wan Kenobi, man. <laughs> you know, it, it always good to have someone within your camp or around you that adds more value to you. You know, it's very, very important. And throughout my entire life, I've always said to my kids and other people, you always, if, if you are the smartest person in the room, you got a freaking problem. You understand what I'm saying? If you are the smartest person in the room, you got to you got to surround yourself as you grow with people that can add value to you, add depth to you. So, the general, once again, <laughs> once again, okay. Let's hand the reins back to, of course, Alan K. That we're speaking about here. The number once again to reach out to him at is eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. When it comes to immigration, eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. We'll just, uh, I just want to hear some more war stories from him and then we'll jump to Adam and then we'll get to some immigration questions, hopefully. Okay. <clears throat> now, as mentioned before, I'm a past president of the American Immigration Lawyers Association. There are about 15,000 immigration lawyers as part of AILA, A-I-L-A. And we exchange information across the country all the time. So one thing just came across my desk which people may find interesting because we all want to know when USCIS is going to open, when they're going to be doing naturalization ceremonies, when they're going to be doing swearing in. So this is something that's going on in LA, but it's interesting because it may happen very soon in New York. And so what's happening in LA is they're going to be conducting naturalization ceremonies, swearing in June 27th and June 28th with social distancing limitations as a priority. So they'll be doing the ceremonies, the swearing in before a judge, uh, but with social distancing limitations. They'll also start doing naturalization interviews, which have been on hold for most of the country on June 16th, with social distancing limitations as a priority. No other interviews with start dates have been planned. Uh, no appointments at the field office of fingerprinting. So, but it gives you an idea about what's gonna be happening, hopefully in our area. But at least we know now that they're moving ahead in Los Angeles and they're moving ahead with naturalization ceremonies and interviews. And, and so I'm exchanging information with people across the country every day. And so at least I know what's going on everywhere else and it can be helpful for our practice in New York to know what's going on. So I think this is probably gonna happen in New York soon. We don't have a date for New York. And as I say, we talked about uh, the email that I got from the field office director right. concerning my naturalization case. And she says they're still working at home, which is interesting. So at least work is being done and they come in and pick up files and go back. I think the date for immigration to start is somewhere at the beginning of June, but that could be changed. We're not sure what's gonna happen, but uh, communication with government offices is one of my priorities. When USCIS is gonna be opening, one of my priorities, and we will keep you informed on what's going on 
and when USCIS is opening. Uh, and, and the other thing that I want to uh, talk about here quickly is you, you talk about the naturalization interviews, um, yes. which, which is extremely important. And it's an election year. I want to put that in there. It is an election year. And uh, uh, folks out there who know that they can file for their citizenship, now is the time to reach out to PPID to help you where that is concerned. So please, we, we implore you to reach out to the firm, PPID, ask them about you know, naturalizing, getting that citizenship. So this way you can vote this year. And with the pandemic and everything that's going on, you need to get it done now. So the number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Now, so you look like you wanted to say something. Yeah, um, Alan is also, Alan, aren't you on the liaison committee? Yes, I'm on a lot of liaison committees. But the most important one is liaison. I'm sorry, what is, what is the liaison committee? The liaison committee is the Immigration Lawyers Association meets periodically with government offices. And they meet periodically with USCIS, where we meet with them when, we're, when the pandemic, before the pandemic started, we met with them in person. So we would go to 26 Federal Plaza, and there'd be a small group of people, immigration officers and immigration lawyers, and we would talk about common problems. Now this will, this will probably be done on Zoom. But liaison meetings are really important because you get to see and talk to the head people and talk, give your questions and get answers from them. So that's the big liaison. I'm on a lot of other liaison committees for AILA, uh, but this is the most important one. There's also one with ICE. I'm on that one too. Uh, there's a whole bunch of liaison committees, but liaison is really important between the lawyers and the government. Got you. All right, once again, folks, cruising with a case handler right here with Alan Kay, our guest today on the show. You've heard from Nelson Madrid. You've heard from Conrad Pollock. And um, we're going to switch it over now from immigration to personal injury so Adam can just expound a bit. And then when we come back, we'll get into the immigration questions. Adam? Yeah, thanks so much, Sus. And uh, we said uh, earlier in the show, we're still able to be very effective uh, in the personal injury department here at Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, the CEO. In fact, uh, as Conrad knows, my, it gives, some of the best moments I have at work are running in, into his office, shutting his door, and start jumping up and down after I just settled a big case. And he'll verify that I actually do do that. And I wonder what people actually in the hallway think when uh, an attorney runs into another attorney's office, shuts the door, and all of a sudden they hear screaming. Uh, it, it's, it, those are great moments. I get such a thrill when I'm able to get a big, big settlement for a client on, on either a difficult case or a, a case in which the client is just really, um, as I'm sure you would say, David, moshed up, you know, uh, yeah, you know yeah. <laughs> uh, just just hurting. And 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 that's that's how I know justice has been served. Like I said earlier, the civil system here in the United States of America provides for one remedy only, and that's monetary compensation. And I let juries know that, you know, when I come uh, selecting a jury in a personal injury case, uh, you know, I may just go right at them and say, my name is Adam Handler. I'm an attorney. I represent the plaintiff, uh, Joe Smith, in this case, and we're asking for money, uh, you know, because that, that's what it's all about. And it's taboo. I know nobody likes talking about it, but that's the only that's the only remedy available to my clients. And that's what we fight for. Uh, and we're good at doing it. We've obtained millions and millions and millions of dollars over the years for our clients, still doing it in the midst of this pandemic, still doing it with the inability to actually walk physically into a courtroom, uh, you know, with my nice suit on and my briefcase and, and be able to uh, express why my client needs full compensation for their injuries, for their medical bills, time out of work and pain and suffering. So we're doing it over the phone now, or we're doing it in this format, Zoom. I've had depositions in the same format that we're doing this right now, that the, the other people on this Zoom are the witnesses. You know, we have a court reporter in one box, we have the defense attorney in another box, and either we have my, my witness, my client in another box, or, or the defendant themselves in another box. And we ask questions just as we would do in person or at trial. Like, can you please tell me what road you were traveling down uh, at 8.30 a.m. on September 5th, 2000, uh, uh, 2019, 2019. Or uh, can you identify the damage depicted in this photograph as the damage uh, sustained in your car uh, in this accident? And uh, we share our screen just in the same way that we share the screen when we show the big settlements. So the, the work is evolving. 
uh, we're evolving with it. Uh, thank God uh, I'm able to be technically savvy with this kind of stuff and my associate Matthew Goodstein even more so. But there are attorneys out there that, that may not be able to be able, not, may not be able to, to handle this new format. And that's unfortunate for them because, you know, it's kind of like the future and the way of the world and they may get, you know, they may get left behind. But for all the case handler clients out there, you should rest easy knowing or the people listening out there that are not my clients. And hopefully you won't be my clients because that means you got injured. But if if you are, then we will happily you know help you. But you should rest assured that we're going to be doing everything we need to do to make sure that that one choice of attorney pays off for you. Because we always say, and I'll repeat it again, one chance, one choice, your case handler team is should be exactly who you need to call if God forbid you're ever in that terrible situation. We don't hang out at the emergency rooms. We don't hang out at the scene of the accident. Doctors aren't making referrals to our offices. We play by the rules and that's why we are successful. When you cheat, you will cheat all around. And if you're a lawyer cheating on getting clients, I guarantee you that lawyer is gonna be cheating their client as well. And I'm saying that right now. If you want an attorney that plays by the rules from the very beginning and is still able to get you that unbelievable result that you and your family deserve, you'll have the number saved God forbid you ever need it, but one last thing to worry about, and that's 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID-LAW. And I also will remind you, and I don't do this enough, I don't care who you are, what you're doing here, what your status is, whether you're from Mexico or the moon, you are absolutely entitled to money under the law, and we will fight to make sure you get that. I don't give uh, a damn if if you're here legally, in status, out of status. Your race, your is. creed, your color, your religion, your it sexual don't, orientation. It don't matter to me. Matter. The only color that matters to me in personal injury cases is what, David? Green. Exactly. <laughs> Green. That the only, <laughs> that's the only color I care about in personal injury cases is green. And of course, I have this wonderful team of immigration attorneys that we will be able to assist me and assist you with your immigration needs if somehow that comes into play when uh, we're litigating your personal injury case. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Handler, the case handler, we also refer to him as the shark because of how aggressive he can be with insurance companies and making sure that you get the maximum compensation. Do call the number and store the number, 844-774-3529. Pay us that compliment by letting the number ring for about 10, 15 seconds. So we here can know that you're truly storing the number for yourself and passing it on to your friends, your families, and like I always say, your foes. The number is 844-774-3529. Jumping into immigration questions. Let's switch back to immigration now, all right? And uh, we had a few questions from yesterday, so I don't want to get beat up by people who accost me from time to time, you know, um, via text and also, of course, via emails, all right, and Facebook. All right, from yesterday, it says here, my sister is going to be a citizen in two years, but my mother needs four years to become a citizen to file for my married siblings. Should we file uh, F4 after my sister becomes U.S. citizen or wait for my mother to become a U.S. citizen. And I'm reading verbatim here, guys. So I, do both. I would do both. I would get the fourth petition, fourth preference petition going. Uh, yes, it's going to take a long time. Obviously, this person has done their homework for a fourth preference petition, but between siblings, it could take 10, 15 years. Um, but I would get that going. And when her mom becomes a citizen, I'd get that petition going as well. You can file as many cases, as many, as many petitions as you like. Uh, whichever one happens first is the one that counts. Absolutely. And that's Conrad Pollock, the maestro, responding to that question, ladies and gentlemen. Do remember to reach out to him at 844-774-3529. That's for your immigration help. 844-774-3529. And also do remember, do not consider what it is that you're hearing on this show, okay, as legal advice. You actually need to go in, see the attorney, sit down with them, and then talk with them about your case in person, privately and confidentially. Once again, cruising with a case handler, 844-774-3529, respectively, personal injury and immigration. Let's get to the second question here. Currently in America, on the ESTA visa stamp, which is due to expire May 27th, 
okay? I am hoping to extend a further 30 days as there are no flights out. Does anybody know the process likelihood of them extending, please? It's possible to get an extension. We've done it in a number of times. It's case by case, but we've been successful in getting 30 day extensions and maybe sometimes beyond that. So the idea is that it takes some doing, it takes some contacts with Customs and Border Protection, but the answer is it is possible, it can be done, we can do it. And if I could, if I could just add in, you know, in normal times, pre-pandemic and hopefully post-pandemic times, um, there is no extension of ESTA. Uh, you come out on ESTA, you get your 90 days, you go home. Um, and there's no extension, there's really very little that you could do in those situations. Um, and in fact, Again, in normal times, pre pre pandemic, uh, if you come on an ESTA and you overstay your 90 days, you lose that ESTA. You can never use that program again. So they're really strict on that. However, as Alan just mentioned, right now it is possible to extend if you have a very good reason. You need compelling reasons to do it. But and, and I've said this previously. I haven't talked about it lately, but I've said it previously. You know, the government. If there is one area in which the immigration service has been somewhat more more lenient than usual, it, it is with regard to extensions of late. Uh, they're aware that it's hard to get flights out it's, or that it's difficult to travel or whatever. Um, so extensions have been granted. And as I said, with uh, ESTA uh, visas, ESTA status, it is possible now. Absolutely. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, respectively, Alan Kay, Conrad Pollock, responding to that question in reference to ESTA, right here on Cruising with a Case Handler, personal injury and immigration, respectively, ladies and gentlemen. Love my new favorite word, respectively. All right. But call him at 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Let's get back to the WhatsApp here. I came here on a tourist visa five months ago. My wife is a green card holder. We just received the I-130 receipt number. If I overstay here six months, am I out of status? I cannot go back because of the virus. Thank you. His wife should become a citizen ASAP. Yes, he's out of status. If he overstays, filing I-130 changes nothing. But once his wife's a U.S. citizen, he can file for adjustment of status in the United States regardless of his illegal status. His wife needs to be a citizen. You know, just to add, though, um, depending on when that I-130 was filed, Alan, I'm sure you were going to talk about this. Yeah. That may be an issue because when you enter as a yeah. visitor, it's supposed to be temporary in nature. So if you enter as a visitor and yeah. file an I-130 a month later, yeah. you can, that's right. You may so have I, a problem. Serious problem. That's a yeah. good catch. Yeah, you had intent. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and that's not good. You're not supposed to have intent when you come into the country on a visitor's visa. You're supposed right. to be visiting. I as, have I, as I've said previously, the law always presumes that any people coming to the United States are presumed immigrants. It's up to the person to demonstrate to the consulate or to immigration otherwise. If they're coming as a visitor, they need to prove that they're coming as a visitor, meaning that they have contacts back in their country. They're just coming to the United States for something temporary, a wedding, an operation, whatever. Uh, that they're able to provide someone, someone's able to provide them with financial support while they're here. They're not going to seek employment. Everybody, the government, the law presumes everyone coming to the U.S. is an intending immigrant. The applicant has to demonstrate otherwise. This right. person, depending on when he filed for that I-130, he may very well have got caught in that trap. Absolutely. And one thing, and we need to talk about it, you know, sometime, um, is the fact that there's a lot of ignorance surrounding certain visas. The visitor's visa is the one I'm talking about right now. People actually come to the border and when asked by the immigration officer, why are you coming to the country? And they said, well, I'm, I'm coming to work. I mean, people, people actually do that. I know people who have done that and I'm quite sure that you guys have heard of that case before. All right, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work. And it's, it's just amazing. And there's so much ignorance around it. And we actually need to let people understand the reason why you get a tourist visa, you know, and you know, it, it's, it's just bizarre. And also the fact that um, the custom and border patrol, they can actually take your phone right there at the border, go right. through it, see the text, see the employer, our potential employer, all of this. So people yep. need to understand more about it. We'll talk more about that um, one day on the show because there's a lot that we need to clear up so people 
clearly understand. But what I want to say, we just went through a couple of questions. And before I get to the next one, I know a lot of people are asking their questions, but please, for God's sake, don't try to do all of this yourself. It is not simple. If, if you thought it was simple before, it is ridiculous.